Ah, young Skywalker. You don't know the power of the dark side. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the behind-the-scenes video for Star Wars Episode Do The Essence of the Force. I'm Pat Kirby, the director of the film, and um, I guess I'll start at the beginning. Um, we, uh, I was with my wife, and she asked me to do something one day, and uh, I said, oh, I'll try. And she said, there is no try. There's only do. And I said, no, no, that's not what he said. Yoda said, do or do not. There is no try. And she says, well, yeah, but everybody thinks it's there is no try. There's only do. And then one of us said, yeah, and, you know, that too bad it's not that because it would make a really interesting uh, Mountain Dew commercial. Now, young Skywalker, as I was saying about the dark side. Ah, oh, crud. Hello. Yeah, I'm trying to talk about the dark side. Who? Mountain Dew? Yeah, you're too late, man. Yeah, I'm giving everybody copies this week. Yeah, look for it on the internet. Okay, thanks. Thanks anyway. Bye. Well, once we came up with a concept, the next step was getting off our butts and doing it. My friend Brad Hell helped me along those lines by saying, um, Pat, I'm just going to call you every week until you get off your butt and do something. So I wrote the script and uh, sent it to him, and he agreed that we should do it. And boy, was he sorry, because uh, once he said that, there was a lot to be done. Cool. There's no try, there's only do. Next thing I said, well, before the next step, we need to find someone who to play our lead character, some people who can fight, who can pull off the, the fight scenes and everything. And I had worked with Thomas DuPont uh, a few years back when he worked at the Excalibur show. It's filthy mongrels! And so I kind of uh, dug up his number and called him out of the blue. I don't know if he remembered who I was, but I uh, sent him a copy of the script and he said, hey, sounds like fun. So uh, I left it up to him to find someone he could fight with, and uh, that's where he came up with Steve Sharp. And Tom and Steve were incredible. They uh, had not actually fought together before, but they had known each other uh, through mutual acquaintances. We went to a location we didn't end up using and did a little bit of choreography there. And then Tom put the whole fight on paper, and we got together at uh, Fernadaire Conservatory of the Arts to actually work on the the choreography and kind of ironed it out there. Very cool. And that was it until the day before the shoot. Uh, we went out uh, the day before and, and went through the choreography one more time and the next time we shot was at full speed and they really did a great job. An integral part of the fight choreography was um, working it with the cameras. And Lynn Nicholson, the steady camera operator, did a terrific job working in concert with uh, the fighters. Um, 
to really come up with some great moves and to cover the fight. We used a jib arm for the overhead shots, uh, but really the primary uh, shot was Lynn Nicholson and his steady cam, and he was right in there amongst them. Uh, almost got his head taken off by lightsabers more than one time. The costume design was by um, Ron Wild and Zelina Burson. Uh, Ron did the uh, costume for the Havna Fett character. Uh, we'd worked with Ron on uh, some projects years ago, um, the Toxic Theater. He did the host for the Toxic Theater talks and, uh, and some Gabby characters for that, for that film. And uh, he was good enough to do it again for us and uh, did a terrific job on both the costume for, for the uh, having the fat and the makeup for Mui Mall. The um, costumes for our heroes and the, and the villain were done by Zelina Burson. And uh, it was kind of a last minute treasure that we found her uh, because I was getting desperate. I was uh, getting ready to go buy a sewing machine and try to do that myself and that would have been an absolute disaster. But uh, we found her and um, she watched uh, Star Wars Episode One and came up with the, the uh, Jedi cloak and uh, his costume and also came up with the uh, Mui Ma's cloak uh, in just a couple of days. So that was a terrific find. Jelena, look, the words can't say how much you mean to us. Thank you so much for all of this. You, if, if it weren't for you, we wouldn't be able to do it. A major portion of this film was the special effects work. Um, Joe Pellegrino was our special effects supervisor and uh, really did the prototypes of the lightsabers. And uh, Barton Anderson really came through and he ended up doing a major portion of the work um, with the lightsabers and the blasters and the explosions and the, the whole force ripple was uh, totally Bart's work. So I really appreciate that. Besides the obvious effect shots, there were a lot of places where the effects department saved my butt. As you can see here in this shot, the steady cam comes into the shot and normally it would have been unusable. But uh, Bart first painted him out frame by frame, then added a layer of smoke to totally disguise the mistake. Another scene was when the Jedi draws his saber. We shot it with a full sword, so that had to be painted out and the extending beam added. I think our lightsabers and blasters look as good or better than uh, the other Star Wars movies. Those ones you see at the theater. One of the things I was most happy about in the film was the lighting design. Hey! Um, anyway, the North Las Vegas Water Detention Basin Dam was an ideal set, but it was kind of a mess. And uh, everyone who pitched in on the painting and the set design, along with the lighting, really made it a spectacular transformation. The thing I like about watching behind the scenes is seeing how shots evolve from the concept to the end result. Um, here's some examples of that on our project. Maul confidently walks towards the Jedi. Jedi leaps forward and strikes Fett in the chest with a force blow. Maul spins his cloak and comes forward with his lightsaber. feeling lightheaded. Another cool thing about behind the scenes videos is the deleted scenes that you never get a chance to see otherwise. This was a uh, deleted character 
Never saw the light of day because Ron Wilde's costumes were just too darn good. We didn't have a lot of deleted scenes, but there were a few. Uh, the lightsaber battle between Tom and Steve was originally a little bit longer. So not only did Tom and Steve go through a lot of effort, but the special effects department had to rotoscope the lightsabers for the sequence before the frickin' director finally changed his mind. Um, another shot we did was had Jake Bass and Joe Basse come out and get in costume and put soot all over their faces and, uh, and had uh, Tom jump down in front of him for a shot for when the Jedi leaps off the wall. Uh, but we never used that either. Sorry guys. Um, probably the biggest one was the opening shot of the live action where Skip Burrows and company really did a great job giving us some big explosions. But uh, due to tracking problems, uh, we couldn't track the CG backgrounds with all the smoke and camera motion. So uh, luckily we had Chuck Bayerano who just replaced the whole shot with totally CG and it, it intercut really well. Well, I know why they call it the dark side. I can't see a thing in this hood. Um, now I'm going to talk about some uh, mistakes that we made uh, during the shoot. Um, to start off with, uh, we, I whacked Joe Wilkerson with the, uh, with the jib arm. That was fun. Now notice after the accident um, how very concerned I am for my dear friend Joe Wilkerson who I've known for about 20 years. I rushed right up to him. Oh wait, I guess I rushed up to the camera. I won't talk about things that were out of focus because that was my fault. So we'll pretend that there weren't really any of those. Okay, there's one we gotta say because there was a close-up that we ended up using in the in the film, and uh, thankfully uh, we had Bart Anderson who kind of put this wisp of smoke in front of him, so you can't really tell that much. Another shot that uh, was a mistake was. Um, the shot when Havna Fett gets body slammed by our Jedi and goes sliding in towards the uh, towards the rest of the villains. Um, we shot the low angle on the wrong side of the line. And uh, so that was a little bit of a problem. So we just flipped it. So if you look real carefully, you can see that our the villains surrounding uh, Mui Mall are on the wrong side of him during that brief, uh, I think it's a one second shot or something like that. Yes, my master. If I had a sidekick like Dr. Evil, I could call him Mini Maul. Well, I gotta say, I had a lot of fun doing this project. Um, my philosophy is the secret to happiness is playing with your friends and using your brain. And I got a chance to do a lot of both on this project. Um, we had a great cast and a great crew and I gotta say um, we had a lot of great characters in front of the camera but we had some good ones behind the camera too. Catch me in three days, see if I still like you people. So what's in that pipe there, Paul? Bees. What do you think? <laughs> You're supposed to be drinking Rock Mountain Dew. No, I don't drink. She's the best. <laughs> I don't know the first shot, Jerry, because the pad keeps changing. Why How far are we behind, Jody? 30 minutes behind now, sir. <laughs> and there's what Joey looks like without his mask. Good. <laughs> Do you have, uh, like, something on the back of your shirt or something? I mean, there you go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is Waymar. 
I said it's lame shooting right behind these pieces of metal. This is always expressive. You've got to wind the camera up. <laughs> Can't point at something. <laughs> Day two, Jerry. Day two. Shooting today? Dude, you need a toothbrush? Oh, never, never. <laughs> Don't believe in them. Six-digit production. The names come with the chairs. Now you realize that the digit, there's a decimal point in it. Oh, in which position? The fifth position. Yeah. <laughs> Last but not least is the musical score. Frank Kopacki did a great job and really captured the essence of the force, the essence of the John Williams soundtrack, and, uh, but made it his own, and uh, I think it's really terrific. So from start to finish, this thing was all Las Vegas talent. The only thing I didn't do here was develop the film and transfer it. Um, everything else was done with all locals, and, uh, and I'm really proud of the project we put together. The per real purpose of this was kind of as a calling card to say this is what a Las Vegas crew can, can put together uh, on their own. And uh, I'm really proud of the result and I hope to be working with everybody again real soon on a, a project that pays. You guys want one?